Hi guys, Scott here from Outlaw Garage. We have an Australian themed video today, a little bit belated for our Australian Day video. However, here it is, and we are introducing Ford to the channel. GTHO, GT, and we've got a GTE on the channel as well. So stay tuned. Please welcome Ford and Craig to the Outlaw Garage channel. Yeah, well look, my um, youth was growing up with the likes of Alan Moffat and Ford. Uh, done my apprenticeship originally in uh, Albury with Blacklocks Ford. Um, and I was fortunate enough to end up buying in the uh, late 70s, mid to late 70s, a, a genuine Jetty HO Phase 3, which are the holy grail of uh, Australian muscle cars. And um, the yellow car on the wall is uh, my old car and uh, it was one of one build and um, yeah pretty significant car sold that in the late 80s to uh, start my business and the rest is history from there so a few years ago i was fortunate enough to uh, be involved with some guys doing a documentary for men's health and uh, uh, mental health and cancer and done a part of a road trip around australia with genuine three genuine cars Hadn't driven one for well over 30 years, went on this trip and rekindled my love for the brand. So this particular white car is actually a uh, fairly accurate replica of the original car um, that I had. Uh, it was built from uh, a Y-code Fairmont, which is uh, a V8 Fairmont, similar trim to a GT. and. Um, has been made up visually and mechanically fairly accurately to the original car. Oh, so not just the, the outside, it's actually mechanically. Yeah, mechanically as yeah. well. So it, it, it's a replica which, you know, once upon a time, replicas were frowned upon. Well, a real one's now a million dollars. Yeah, you can have a, a replica for a fairly reasonable price. And reproduction parts are fairly obtainable and some of the replicas are probably better than the original cars. Their accuracy and uh, condition uh, the, the way they're done nowadays. The other Falcons are all um, pretty special in different ways. Uh, the black and gold car is... So we'll wander up, take a look at this one. Because yeah. the, the gold is stunning, aren't it? Yeah. Now this particular car is a tribute to the 40th anniversary of the Falcon GT in Australia. And the, 40th an uh, the original Falcon GT was gold with black. So this particular car... Mm was the reverse colour scheme and a tribute to the original car on the 40th anniversary being 2007. One of uh, 200 build and this is a six speed manual car um, and it's build number 41 of the 200. Uh, original 7,000 kilometres from new, not restored, it's just the original. 7,000? Yeah. Yeah, so it's a car that came out and I missed that. They were pre-sold basically before they hit the showroom floors and I missed out on one. Always liked them and bought this car only uh, late last year. Yeah, okay. Let's go on the front. Similar sort of things in the seats and the badging and interior. Uh, open her up, take a bit of a look inside. Yeah, you want to go from that side? Whatever. Uh, this side. Is that open? Yeah, yeah they're all on the look at that. Oh, look at the seat. It's got like a, a silver insert yeah, as well, isn't it? Yeah, it's a shadow trim or something like that. Ah. Can, it's got a little badge on the console if you want. You can shut that tray. Oh, yeah. yeah that's the number. There we go. Yeah, that shadow trim is all, all the way throughout, isn't it? The light headliner. And then even down in the footwell there. So the car's uh, nearly 16 years old. Wow. And it's flat black, isn't it? Uh, no, it's, it's uh, it? gloss, gloss black. Yeah, gloss. Wow. Okay. 
Oh, spec. Yeah, so G GDHO actually stands for Grand Touring Handling Option, and hence when I bought this, I uh, managed to get the number plate, 40 being 40th anniversary, GT being Grand Touring, and HO Handling Option, and the R spec's a handling option. So I've got a thing about having plates to uh, match the cars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, um, yeah, that's really cool. And then next to it... Yeah, now this, this particular car was built, um, it's a GT as well, and it's actually a GTE. Now, GTE was for the executive that didn't want the wild spoilers and stripes. Um, very limited edition. This is 100, build number 103 of 119 cars. Um, and uh, this is a bit of a sleeper this car this is the, a supercharged engine out of the factory also been tuned um, a very quick car it's 415 kilowatts and quarter mile it's been clocked quarter mile at 11.7 and, and it and it drives beautifully it's not a race car to drive it's just a very very understated car yeah because you look at the the rear it does have that executive. Yeah, so that's what they'll design. No flare. So the GT version would get a spoiler similar to that stripe. And yeah, that. and that's got the big spoiler on the back there and the stripes. That's a quick executive oh, car, is isn't it? This is a quick car. And inside, it's once again, you can have a look on it, you can open it and have a look. Um, I'll show you the motor if you want. Yeah, let's have a look inside. So you can see the underside and the, the badging in the headrest of the seats. Yeah, because it's even got the yeah the wood. The wood. Oh yeah, the GTE. Oh, and those then, look really comfy seats as well. Yeah, and then you'll see the starter button's got the build number on it. Uh, but it's a lot more sedate. Yeah. Yeah, it's a. It's but definitely that sleeper. Yeah, it's it's for the executive that wanted a GT that didn't want all the uh, uh, the flashier. I guess if you had a business as well, this yeah, would probably exactly. be easy exactly to claim the, on your uh, tax. And well, your... maybe, but <laughs> it was aimed at the at the business person that yeah wanted best of both worlds, I suppose. So this that's why I like the performance similar to the Mustang. This is probably quicker. Oh. That kind because, of, you know, I, I think people who watch the channel will go, he's got no idea what he's looking at here. But that, that is, look at that down there. And once again, this was a car that I loved from when they were new. I've had similar models from new. And Amazing condition for 65,000. Yeah, yeah. And the GTE, the number plate once again, GTE, <laughs> and the build number. And said, so I've got a thing about that. So it's it's uh, that, that, because I don't know enough about Fords, and when you say like limited edition, I'm like, genuinely, I was kind of expecting, oh, it's 10, 20, 30, 40, 50,000. Yeah. No, not, these are very limited. Not 100 and something. Correct. Yeah. And that's the same, the, the special thing about this particular car. So this is, I suppose your runner, your mill GTs, but after the 40th anniversary, they released a, a tribute to the, the Cobra, which was white with blue stripes. This particular car build is one of 262 uh, because it was one of the last of that model that was fitted with the Cobra motor, which was the 302 kilowatt motor, oh. whereas they normally had a 290 kilowatt. Oh, I'm going to have to crack the hood on that. So that's what, once again, Ford Performance Vehicles and the build number 66. <laughs> Just not at all what I kind of expected. Yeah. Yeah, look, people that are into them and sort of understand them and that sort of thing, but... Uh, so that's, a, yeah, it's a big V8. Yeah. Wide V8. Yeah. So that's sort of the importance about this car. So they made... I'm not sure, I think, you know, 1,700 of this actual model, but uh, the breakdown of, of different limited editions and build numbers, uh, and uh, yeah, it's one of 262 with the, the 302 kilowatt engine.
which makes it rarer than the 400 Cobras built that were a limited edition. Kilometres? Uh, just clocked 40,000 from 2007. Wow. Yeah, that's unbelievable, that is. So it's a bit like when I I always try to buy the best examples I can afford. You know, I just yeah. think it it's worked for me as far as an enjoyment, investment, whatever way you want to look at it. You know, I think if you can buy the right cars, it, uh, they're a good thing from both angles. Genuinely, really no idea. I knew we'll come in here today to look at the Mustang, and that'll be a separate video. To see these in... It's always a nice bit of an education process as well, sometimes turning up and Yeah, them. I said, look, you know, for me, I enjoy them and uh, like talking about them. Enjoy the history part as much as the driving experience. I think, uh, uh, I, you know, I collect magazines, brochures, any news articles uh, I can find and put it all together. And yeah, it's, good, it's good history. Yeah, just... Yeah, because you see them sat there and you think, oh, it's got a full badge on it. And, yeah, and, right. and, you know, knowing that they've got a bit of a dent in the bonnet and there, there's something a little bit more spicy under there. But, wow, I didn't expect that at all. And those low numbers that I... Yeah, people don't expect that with Ford. You know, said they're very low numbers, you know, and... Uh... But what a change as well now, like, with you know car manufacturing disappeared from australia yeah and then i don't genuinely think ford would do this kind of thing these we won't, days. well we won't see that it here again the past doesn't it yeah it's it's all part of the history with ford here in australia and it's links uh to racing you know bathurst in particular it's uh the race cars were based on these particular models yeah so it's a moment in time that yeah probably never ever won't see again. Yeah. 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 This engine is pretty much the same as that, except lower capacity of 290 kilowatts. Wow. It's actually a nice view with them all the bonnets, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> so just slightly lower powered. Yeah. Well, you don't see that every day. And you could genuinely eat your dinner off them. We talked about this earlier. Glass of wine. That's polishing right. Cars. Yes. That's <laughs> it, uh, polishing cars for me is, is like gardening for a lot of other people. Just that's when we need to stand back here and have a bit of a look at that. That is a bit of history there. Yeah, because I, I imagine there's a fair bit of space in, in the other hood. Yeah. Like, it is relatively tight in there, but there's yeah. enough space for you to... Yeah, but see, like, the fuel, fuel pump's there. Well, I just unbolted two bolts and a gasket and put it back on. Yeah, you can get to the alternator, you can get to bits. Yeah, it's not like a modern-day car or even like a, an annoying turbo 911 where you can't get to anything. Yeah, well, that's right, the modern one. Got a plastic cover on there. Yeah. Oh, that's really nicely done. So with this, I bought it, sort of restored, and finished it off. This particular car, I said, it is a, a reasonably accurate uh, replica. Um, so it came out with a V8. Uh, it was a factory V8 white Fairmont, uh, what's known as a Y code, and it's been fitted with a 351 period correct D block. A four-speed top loader, which is the period correct gearbox and nine-inch diff rear end GT suspension. Well, the only thing I haven't done yet, I've got a, a replica original bonnet to go on it, which um, has ah. different bonnet struts. Okay. Uh, so I've just got to fit that uh, shortly. 36-gallon fuel tank, um, which is uh, expensive to fill up these days. It's uh, a lot of litres there. Does it eat a lot of fuel? Oh, I don't imagine it's... Uh, yeah, if you put the... Put, put the it, boot into it. it it's, uh, it's, it's old school, you know, it's yeah. old school fun. Um, you know, it's got the wind whistles and a few rattles, but uh, as I said, it's taken me back to my youth at growing up with a, a real one at the time. And uh, yeah, it's enjoyable. Yeah, it is, yeah. And again, just so clean. 
underneath the same. Yeah. I just assume that yeah. underneath <laughs> was. There, the wing mirrors. Have a look on the inside. So the proper the G2 dash console seats, uh, a retro reproduction radio. Yeah. Uh, with Bluetooth. Oh, it's gorgeous inside. And did, was the interior done when you got it, or? Yeah, yeah, the interior done. Um, so someone had done a like yeah. a reasonably good job before. You... Yeah, look, it was, and that's sort of why I bought it. And it was just probably before the boom of the uh, replicas or tributes. Now they call them; they don't call them replicas anymore. Um, they started taking off, but um, like I was saying earlier, you can buy nearly everything for them to, to build a car now, apart from the, the original shell, uh, but yeah, you know, panels, wheels, uh, interior parts, mechanical, um, yeah, everything's available. I guess when the original car now is a million plus, then that's you, right, yeah. You know, the and there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of people out there um, that, uh, yeah, make all this stuff and sell it because yeah, it's um, they good tributes are quite collectible now. You know, uh, if they're done right. So. Yeah, that's a lovely decal on the side as well. That the kangaroo. You can sort of see the models in the cabinet. Alan Moffat and Brock poster up on the wall there. Yeah, we were going to have a look at that because we did talk about. Uh, the original car that you owned. Yeah, so that's that's my original car. Um, Let's see if we can not get a reflection. Yeah, so that particular car is um, that was build number 147 of the 300 genuine cars built. Uh, that was uh, Shell Petrol Company yellow and the only one in that colour. Uh, also had B2 trim, which is quite rare, which is uh, black vinyl with uh, cloth, black cloth inserts. Do you know where it is now? Yeah, it's in Queensland, apparently. Uh, mm, okay. yeah. It's not seen, but it's sort of known about yeah. that there's Alan Moffat driving it for Wheels magazine. So. Oh, the same car? That's my car with Alan Moffat driving it. <laughs> Look at that. 1988. At Caudle Raceway. Yeah, it's got, a, it's got a nice little bit of lean on it. Yeah, it? it's, it's got some there. And then the photo here. Yeah, so saying... this, this particular photo is um, a photo that well, I think it was Wheels magazine and it was quite famous because of its uh, uh, speed at the time, which was 140 mile an hour down the Hume Highway uh, at full revs. So it's a fairly famous photo. Yeah. Those are the days with no speed camera, I guess. Yes, that's right. And back in those days, you'd have probably had, a, had uh, trouble with the policeman trying to catch up with you as well. Well, I, I believe that did happen. <laughs> 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 Not mention any names. Yeah, interesting collection. We yeah. haven't covered the other cars. There are a collection of Porsches here, but we're drifting away from that today. The Aston Martin's very nice as well. We've come over for a Australia Day theme, isn't it? Yeah, I think that's uh, that's what we're clocking on to. Hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, happy belated Australia Day to everybody. Uh, a, a real find here and a bit of an eye opener for me with these low production numbers of these Ford cars. Great day out. Thank you very much to Craig. Please give the video a big thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and we will see you later. See you guys. Bye.